So, uh, hello and thank you for being here. Um, I'm Amin, and I'll be presenting our work, uh, Dynamic Searchable Encryption with Optimal Search in the Presence of Deletions. Uh, this is joint work by Javad, Demetrius, myself, and Yanis, my advisor. So, nowadays, using clouds has become very prevalent. I don't have to go through that part, but uh, given the many potentials for breaches, like malice, human error, whatever, um, there's a serious challenge of private cloud computing. Therefore, sorry. Therefore, um, sorry, I'm having a weird issue right here. <laughs> sorry. Can I? Whew. Anyway, so, pardon? All right. Yeah, something's, something's not working. Anyway, I'll go through anyway. So, okay. Um, malice human error, challenge for private computing. So the first step would be um, encryption, standard encryption, but that's not enough. For example, you would need to have your client only be the only person who sees the encryption key, and also you want to have efficient processing of the data. Now, the solution, as you've seen in the previous talks, is searchable encryption, first Song Adal, first introduced by Song Adal in the year 2000. It has received a lot of attention in so many parts, but the part that I want to focus on here is dynamic searchable encryption, which basically means you want to have efficient search while you can uh, update your data set. Um, it has a lot of applications. Recently, it was added to MongoDB as their queryable encryption feature set. Uh, you can use it for annotated image search. It was proposed to be used for gun registry. And the generic basic step, uh, basic thing that you can uh, make with searchable encryption boils down to an encrypted key value store and therefore databases. And the classic example ends up being uh, encrypted inverted indexes, for example, for emails or documents, as you've seen already. So in dynamic searchable encryption, it boils down to three basic protocols. First one is setup, so when you have a multi-map, and by a multi-map, it's a map with multiple, potentially multiple values for each key, um, the client wants to outsource this to, a, to an untrusted cloud, and so the cl client encrypts it in a way that obscures the cloud's view into the data. This may be by encrypting each value and then shuffling them, and then sends it and the setup's complete. Similarly, the second pr uh, protocol is search, where uh, there is a keyword or a key that the client wants to search for, encrypts it in a manner that uh, the client cannot see into it but still can perform the search, sends it, and as a result, the server accesses the memory locations necessary and returns the results. Um, lastly, there's update, which um, boils down to insertions and deletions of key value pairs. Um, again, encrypting to uh, only give as much information as necessary. Um, now, the cloud in this scenario only learns something called leakage, which is very strictly con controlled. Uh, it should be well-defined and proven cryptographically, and it boils down to three parts, one for each protocol, as you can see. One is setup leakage, usually boils down to only the total size. Then there's the search leakage, search pattern query and access pattern. Uh, and finally, there's update leakage, which is a little more complicated, so I'll give it a whole slide. Um, Starting with the multi-map that we got in the previous slide, um, if the client wants to search for one key, as you see in the, saw in the previous talk, the server has to, in any case, access the necessary memory locations to give back the result. Now, if the client wants to insert another uh, key value pair for the same key, um, we, uh, we don't want the server to be able to link these, this update and the previous search. And more formally, we want the update to leak nothing about the key that is being updated. Um, this is something that we look at for during updates, but it really pertains, also pertains to the searches that happen, happened before. The second part, the second example, um, say the client inserts a key value pair and deletes it right after. Now at this point, if the client wants to perform a search for the same key, um, we don't want the server to learn too much information about such a key value pair that was inserted and deleted without ever appearing in a search. It, 
boils down to uh, multiple levels. But, uh, and by the way, the first one was forward privacy, this one's backward privacy. And backward privacy boils down to multiple levels with uh, very strict definition, but the very basic thing is that we don't want to leak the value. This one, uh, as opposed to the a previous one, forward privacy, it happens during searches, but it is, about, uh, it, also, it is very related to the information that is leaked during updates. Now, all of that boils down to the fact that um, we have to leak, uh, in order to not leak too much, we have to sacrifice some efficiency. And prior work didn't have, prior work that did dynamic searchable encryption with forward and backward privacy did not have optimal search. For example, starting with a uh, multi-map with capacity N, um, if a client wanted to insert a bunch of values, they would be put in pseudo random locations in the server's uh, location, and uh, in the server's memory, and I'm denoting the number of insertions with I. Now, at this point, um, if the client went, and went ahead and did a deletion, and know that this is an example workload, like it may be way more complicated, multiple keys, whatever. Um, so if the client went ahead and did a deletion, um, the server would very often in the previous schemes do a cancellation, insert a cancellation record because it's the very easy way to stay forward private. So if there were more deletions so that only one value remained valid, um, if the server, if the client went ahead and did a search here, um, the server would have to read, send all of the, read and send all of the insertions and cancellation records, and at that point, the client would have to go through them just to find the one result that remains. Um, as a result, um, and similarly, as I said, many works with cancellation records, which didn't scale with deletions, um, a few works did a quasi-optimal search, and uh, when I say quasi-optimal, it boils down to a polylogarithmic factor of n on top of the result size. And um, there was no scheme that uh, optimal search, which, and this was only in plain text schemes. So we did it. And uh, the rest of the talk, I'll explain how the scheme works. Um, I'll start with, a, um, with an array, but know that this is not a regular array. Similar to the previous slides, this is uh, each entry is in its own pseudo-random location. Um, if the client w goes ahead and inserts a value um, for this key, and this array is for one key only, we insert the first value in the first entry of the array, create one node above the first two, and this ends up being a binary tier tree. It's a very small one right now, and um, so on. So if the client goes ahead and inserts like four more values, uh, this ends up being, as you can see, um, where we keep creating the tree nodes on top of it. Know that the array and the tree are conceptual here. Uh, they are embedded in the multi-map that we uh, store on the server, and we leverage it to perform searches and deletions efficiently. Also, uh, note that um, the array has, the address of the nodes of the array are uh, generated through a hash function of the key and the index in the array, so we don't really need to write the nodes on top of the array before they are changed. We denote the number of times a node has changed, changed with a version counter, where version zero is the default contents. Um, at this point, if the server, decide, the client decides to delete the first value, um, we go ahead and remove the node on top of the first two values, on top of the leaf that is going to be deleted, and then we uh, point the grandparent of the leaf that is deleted to its sibling, therefore retaining that uh, sibling as a valid node. Um, and then since we have, and when I say deleted, we write it to a new location and never read the previous one. So when the version changes and the address changes for node one four in this example, it, the pointer to it from the node above uh, doesn't work anymore, so we have to write that again. So each update means uh, writing log n nodes because we have to maintain the forward privacy that I told you before. And therefore, we have a log n blow up for deletions, which means super linear space. But as a result of all of this, the number of valid nodes in our tree remains O of R, and therefore, we can, gain, uh, we can get to optimal search. Similarly, if we want to delete the fourth value, we remove that node, and the nodes above go to version two. At this point, um, if a search 
starts, we do a BFS at the root. Um, we know there have been five leaves. We go in both directions, moving down. But on the right side, we know that the le right side of it, uh, i.e., right side of node 5, 8, doesn't have anything. So we don't go in that direction, so on. Um, I'll go over a little bit more details right now. So firstly, when a search is about to happen, the encrypted search token should, enough, should have enough information to allow the server to find the tree and traverse it. And therefore, we uh, put the IDN node of IDN version of the root uh, in the search token. So with just one more hash, the server can find the node. And to find the next nodes, we also put the same information about both sides and that node. Um, also, uh, we can remove the, um, this means uh, a storage overhead for the client, which we can remove by using oblivious encrypted maps, oblivious primitives. As you heard, they are more expensive. For example, log squared n cost over log n rounds. But this gives us uh, constant client storage. Um, also, for updates, in order to do them and allow the searches to happen, we, have to, we do a little bit more costly updates, which also use oblivious maps. Um, we also have a second scheme, which doesn't have this dlogin add, adding on the space. The idea is pretty simple. We don't store the children's versions. So each deletion means a node, one node changes. And, there, and then we binary search for the latest no, version of each node. Uh, again, this is, by the way, this second scheme is still asymptotically and empirically for, faster than the previous state of the art, um, which had our login search. Um, finally, uh, we have a bunch of experiments. We implemented in C++, used OpenSSL, ASNI, was enabled. Uh, the code is open source. Uh, we compared with the best scheme that had cancellation records and also the best quasi-optimal scheme. Uh, first one is SDD, the second one QoS. Uh, it was run on a single machine, and we also did a, several optimizations which um, are compatible with this privacy and leakage profile, and that's not exactly a typical thing. Like, not a very straightforward thing, because you cannot do, throw any random optimization there and expect the same leakage profile to happen. Anywho, um, going through this a little faster, um, the experiment I want to show here is the search time. So um, firstly, you can see that the cancellation record speed just uh, goes down, as in it takes more time with more deletions. But the previous quasi-optimal scheme becomes faster. Here we're doing, uh, we're deleting values uniformly in a database of 1 million records with 20,000 for each key. Um, then our optimal scheme uh, just beats the previous state of the art and beats uh, the best cancellation record scheme at above 55% deletions. And lastly, um, optimizations really matter. Like, we beat everything after a very small percentage of deletions. I really encourage you to see the optimizations in the paper. To conclude, we did the first forward and pirate backward private dynamic search mode encryption with optimal search, a second scheme which still beats everything else, and the code is open source. Thank you.